few minutes. We're going to um, just take a few minutes and then we'll resume in, resume in worship to honor the Inuit people of Canada. This is a big deal. It's a very big deal. And some of you don't know, but I wear the flag because the Lord tells me to wear the flag of Canada to stand as a prophetic sign that God is liberating this nation. And he says, you wear it around your hips and legs as a sign that I am healing the spiritual hips and legs of this nation. And to get it mobilized. The body of Christ is getting mobilized. And I believe it has to do with the apostolic movement in Canada. And during worship, um, I just um, felt the Lord saying, you're taking new territory. But God is also taking new territory in you. We let him. So um, just before I get started, I just want to, I have a gavel here. And I'll just, this is what it sounds like, pretty loud. So I just want to tell you just about the gavel just for a few minutes before we get doing the prophetic act. So in Job, it says to decree a thing so it shall be established. And when I read that, I felt like God had wanted me to start making decrees. And so I was asking him about that. And then a few days later, I went to my mailbox and a, a person I hardly knew from Alberta sent me a book all about decrees with a, a little note that said the Holy Spirit told me to send you this book. So I'm like, okay, so I'm going to be uh, making decrees. And with that, um, when I started going places to make decrees, I would get lent a gavel. And so I was borrowing gavels because where do you go to get a gavel, right? So I was doing that, and then um, I was in, uh, in British Columbia at one of the conferences, and I said to them, do you have a gavel? And one of the guys went home, and he brought back a meat tenderizer. <laughs> He said, this is the closest thing I could find. So we used it. And I said to the Lord, I need my own gavel if this is what you want me to do. And so, um, honest to God, uh, we, within a week or two, uh, one of our team members came to me and said, Maggie, I was um, looking through some drawers in my house and cleaning, and I came across this gavel. And I asked the Lord what I should do with it. And he said, why don't you give it to Maggie? She says, are you in the market for a gavel? I'm like, yes. So my point is I have a gavel and I'm supposed to use it. So we're going to do this prophetic act. And at the very end, I'm going to decree a thing so it will be established. And then you'll hear this. Okay? So I'm just going to wait for um, um, uh, Sandy and Louisa to come. And I'm wondering if they're coming. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, there they come. Yay! Come on down. Come on. Okay, so, um, Luis, I'm going to have you sit here. Luisa Gillespie is an Inuit woman who has joined our team several years ago and moved right into the big city of Arthur and joined the Father's Heart Healing Ministries team. And if, if anyone was at our conference, uh, I think it was three, four years ago, um, the Lord had um, in, asked us to honor the first people and specifically um, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit with a, with a public foot washing, and, and there was a bunch of other things. And that was the first time I met Louisa because she stood in for the Inuit of Canada. So very fitting that today she is here to, re we're speaking, I'm going to be speaking to the spirit realm, but she is going to receive on behalf of her people. And so this is a good thing. And so the Lord had directed us to do a prophetic act, and, and I'll get to that in a second. I just, um, it will just move along and we'll go right into it. So the majority of the Inuit of Canada live in the northern regions of Canada. They carry unique culture that includes throat singing and drumming that has added much beauty to the heritage of Canada. However, in the history of Canada, the Inuit have suffered greatly as a people at the hands of the white man, the residential schools, and the religious system. Today, the statistics for the Inuit in Canada show that the suicide rate among the Inuit are 10 times the national average, and the suicide rate among the young men in the Inuit communities are 40 times the national average. You just can see where things are at. So, several weeks ago, I was seeking the Lord about the Infusion Conference, and I was asking him... Um, you know, what do you want to do with the conference, God? Like, you know, and so out of the blue, he said, I want you to honor and highlight the Inuit of Canada. And then he said this, I want you to honor and highlight the Inuit of Canada because they always get the shaft. That was the phrase he used. I, I, I'm like, 
I don't hear that phrase very often. And so it just kept turning over and over in my spirit. And um, about a week later, I was laying in bed, and it came back. They get the shaft. And I felt the Lord say, get up, look it up. And so I Googled it. So see, Google has its purposes. So I Googled it. <laughs> and here's what get the shaft means. It's actually a slang term. And it means to be exploited, cheated, taken advantage of, treated unfairly. And the phrase is a slang term that refers to a sodomite or sodomy. A few days later, the Lord spoke to me again when we were praying with the leadership team. And he said this. He said, the Inuit have been raped as a people. I was seeking him about this. And I asked him to use the word of God to show me what he, what he meant by this. And so he took me into 2 Samuel 13, the biblical story of Tamar, the daughter of King David. And in the story, Tamar had a brother, Absalom, and a half-brother, Amnon. And in the story, Amnon raped Tamar. He faked that he was sick, and she was caring for him, cooking for him, feeding him. He took advantage of her hospitality, grabbed her, and violated her. Tamar tried to stop him and reason with him. It's saying that we should get, you know, ask my father, he'll give you to me in marriage. We should make a covenant first. And in verse um, 14 of chapter 13, it says, but Amnon wouldn't listen to her. And since he was stronger than she was, he raped her. Then suddenly Amnon's love turned to hate and he hated her more than he had loved her. Get out of here. He snarled at her. And so at this point, Amnon is sending her away, and Tamar is begging him to make a covenant with her. And in verse 16, Tamar says this, sending me away now is worse than what you've already done to me. So Tamar is saying, it's not bad enough that you rape me. You're making it worse now by not entering into a marriage covenant with me. And the scripture goes on to say, but Amnon wouldn't listen to her. He shouted for his servant and demanded, throw this woman out, lock the door behind her. And the scripture says this. So the servant put her out, locked the door behind her. She was wearing a long, beautiful robe, as was the custom in those days for the king's virgin daughters. But now Tamar tore her robe and put ashes on her head. And then, with her face in her hand, she went, cry she went away crying. And in verse 20, it says, So Tamar lived as a desolate woman in her brother Absalom's house. Her father, King David, did not rescue her. Instead, her brother Absalom had Amnon killed. But even after Amnon was killed, there was no restoration for Tamar. She lived in desolation for the rest of her life. This is a very sad story. I'd like you to stand up, Louisa. So God was likening the plight and spiritual condition of the Inuit people to that of Tamar. Just like Tamar, the Inuit of Canada have experienced pain and suffering at the hands of another. Just like Tamar, the Inuit of Canada have experienced betrayal, rejection, and having been cast aside with no one to protect them. And just like Tamar, the Inuit of Canada were royalty, sons and daughters of the king. And just like Tamar, the Inuit of Canada were once clothed in a royal robe. And just like Tamar, the Inuit of Canada have torn their robe, Louisa, have torn their robe in anguish and in desperation. And just like Tamar, they have put ashes on their head. But that's where the likeness ends because our Heavenly Father is stepping in. And He has a plan and a strategy for restoration and transformation for the Inuit of Canada. And so, to the Inuit of Canada, I declare that today you are being called out of the place of desolation and you are being called into the place of restoration. And I hear the Father saying to you, Inuit, I saw you when you struggled in your own blood, and I said, live. I saw you when you were struggling to live, and I wanted you. When no one else wanted you, I wanted you. And I see the Father is issuing an invitation to the Inuit of Canada in this hour. He is calling you today to enter into a holy covenant with his son, Jesus Christ. He is calling you to be his sons and daughters. 
And the Lord says, Inuit of Canada, today I remove the ashes from your head. And I declare that you are being loosened from the strongholds of shame and hopelessness. And I release you from a spirit of death that has clouded your vision. I break the power of lies that have wounded you in your identity and destiny. And today, I loose you from an orphan spirit that has bound you to a victim mindset. And in the name of Jesus, I sever all legal rights and powers associated with that orphan spirit. I renounce every word, curse, and every action that has connected the Inuit of Canada to the orphan spirit. And I exchange the ashes from your head with the headdress of honor, a wedding veil, to symbolize that you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. You're being transformed into sons and daughters. Inuit of Canada, today I bless you to enter into the revelation and covenant of sonship. I declare that you will walk in a victory mindset and you will receive clear vision for your identity and destiny. And I declare that you will walk in the covenant promises of Jesus Christ, who is the firstborn of many sons and daughters. I release the spirit of tw truth to dwell within you, to expose every lie and bring healing to deep wounds. And I declare that the Father's blessing and favor will rest heavily upon you. Inuit people of Canada, today I remove the torn robe from your body. And along with it, I loosen you from all legal rights and powers associated with the territorial spirits of suicide, addiction, and mental illness. And in Jesus' name, I remove those territorial spirits from your dwelling places and I cast them away from you. And exchange, I release to you a new robe, a robe that speaks of purity and hope and peace, a new gown that symbolizes covenant relationship. You are no longer on your own. I release you from isolation and a stronghold of rejection. I declare that you belong. You are an important part of the bride, the family of God, and you are beloved by your heavenly father. This new mantle is your true identity and destiny in the body of Christ. The father is inviting you to take your rightful place in his household, the place within the bride of Jesus Christ that has been set aside just for you. For you are called, you are being called into the kingdom for such a time as this. And Inuit of Canada, I speak to your spirit and I call it to attention. I bless your spirit to receive revelation of your true identity and destiny as a governmental people that the father is raising up for his glory. And I bless you to rise up as mighty warriors and to slay the giants in your land. And I bless you as a Gideon-like army that God is raising up in the northern parts of Canada. And you are being called out of desolation. And you are being called into restoration. And I declare that you are being called out of desolation. And you are being called in to restoration. And the Lord says you are being called out of desolation. And you are being being called into restoration and into transformation and I bless the voice of the Inuit of Canada and I remove the fear that has silenced you and I speak life into your spirit and your soul and your body and I bless the new sound that is emerging and I declare that out of your belly will flow rivers of living water and the church in Canada has been waiting for you the church has been waiting for the sound that is coming from the north wind the north wind is blowing and I speak to the north wind and I declare it is time to release your voice I call for the voice of the north wind to be released over Canada and I release the voice of the Inuit to rise up and shatter the strongholds of religion in Canada I hear the voice of victory coming from the north and I see the sound of victory breaking through the strongholds of bondage, breaking through the strongholds of depression and suicide and addiction and mental illness and I see the Inuit rising up in the mantle and anointing of El Shaddai the many breasted one and I see the Inuit running with the anointing of healing and wholeness to the broken hearted and I see the voice
voice of the Inuit lighting the fires of revival in Canada. Behold the gatekeepers to Canada's destiny. It's time to open the gates to Canada's destiny and let the King of Glory come in. So I decree that today God is positioning the Inuit of Canada to come into their rightful place in the body of Christ. Sealed. And I decree that the Inuit of Canada are shifting, shifting, shifting into the place of restoration and transformation. Sealed. And I decree that God is positioning his government in Canada. Sealed. And I decree that the Inuit of Canada are receiving an infusion of resurrection power in this season. Sealed. And I decree that the Inuit of Canada will be unshakable and unstoppable in their passion for Jesus Christ. Sealed and amen. Woo! So that was really good. <laughs> he is a good father. Wow. That's my favorite song. We even named our ministry after the Father, Father's Heart Healing Ministries. You know, um, so good. God has taken new territory. He is not fooling around. He wants this nation. And you know, all this was not not my idea. This was God's idea. The Father has a plan. And we just need to hear his heart and do it the way he's saying to do it. Right? So that's good. Um, oh, I just wanted to say, you know, called our, our um, thank you, David and the band. You guys rock, like, so good. Thank you. They'll be, they'll be also playing duration of the weekend. So um, I just wanted to say something quick. Um, we, when we moved into our new building recently, I was thinking about, should we put the sign all the way, because it's a pretty, pretty big um, sign. It would say, Father's Heart Healing Ministries. And I felt like the Lord said, yeah, put, put me up there. And it's so interesting because a man came in after we did it. One of the first persons come in the door after we put the sign up. He looked at me. He says, are you in charge around here? And I said, oh, kind of, right? And he come up and he said, so who's the father? <laughs> that was his question because he saw a father. And see, that's what God, I believe in Canada, that the movement we're going to see that we're in, that that's happening right now, that's breaking open in this season, is a movement of the father, it's the Father's heart being revealed through his sons and daughters. So that's so good. Okay, um, we have a couple things to do. Wesley Campbell is going to be speaking this afternoon. We're very excited to hear what God has put on his heart.